Welcome everyone to the Start Me Up HK Salon's virtual events. My name is Jamilet Cano and I'm going to be your MC for the festival. As you know, the Start Me Up HK Salon's is a global initiative by the Start Me Up HK team. Together with the Invest HK overseas offices, they want to push their initiatives and promote the Start Me Up HK in the local startup communities. We are going to have six overseas salons targeted into very specific markets. And that's why we have the ASEAN offices joining us today. Hello, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand. We're also connecting all the way to Europe with the Brussels office, London, and Berlin. Salut, Brussels, ça va? My name is Jamilat. We're going to have the North American edition with the offices in Toronto, High Canada, New York, and San Francisco. South American edition with the office in Chile. Hola Chile, como están? And Brazil, A to the bone, and Mexico. We have Middle East and India offices with Mumbai joining together. And we also have the Greater Bay Area office in Wanzhou. That Jia Hao. How are you, everyone? And of course, our attendees here in Hong Kong. Thank you very much for joining. So I hope you enjoy, connect, support, network, and promote. See you soon at all our events. Our corporate panel is coming up next, and we will be showcasing case studies in corporate innovation in Hong Kong. Example of startup hubs, digitalization projects, and innovation in socially responsible business management. We have our moderator, Mushir Ahmed. He is the founder and managing director of FinStep Asia. Please welcome Mushir. Thank you, Yamilet. Hello everybody, my name is Mushi Rahmat. I'm the founder and MD of FinStep Asia and co-founder of the FinTech Association of Hong Kong. FinStep Asia is a venture builder and content thinker who enables companies to grow in scale across Asia. Today we have a very interesting panel and some thought leaders who are gonna to talk to us about corporate innovation and how you can engage in the Hong Kong ecosystem. Now I'll ask my panelists to please introduce themselves and we'll move on to the questions right after that. Kareen, let's start with you. Hello, my name is Karine, and I am with the Mills Fabrica, uh, the innovation arm of the Mills. Uh, we are a startup incubator, a VC fund, and a community with place, uh, spaces sorry, in uh, London and in Hong Kong. And we focus on uh, lifestyle technology, so namely uh, apparel and textile, fashion and retail, as well as ag and food tech industries. Thank you. Edwin? Hi, uh, my name is Edwin. I'm with Mox Bank. Uh, we're one of the eight new virtual banks in Hong Kong, uh, backed by Standard Chartered uh, in partnerships with HKT, PCCW, and Trip.com. Thank you. Ben? Hi, I'm Ben, and I'm the head of uh, Open Innovation at Eureka Nova. We're a new world development company. Uh, what we do is we drive innovation and empower startups. Uh, to work specifically with our business units in real estate, in residential, in retail, as well as in sports and health. Thank you. So we, when we're looking at corporate innovation, there's a lot of talk of and use of technology, right? And modernization thereof is very important. Edwin, how, are, how is Mox using modern technology and digitalization? Uh, and what has been the changes in the industry that you're seeing? Uh, thanks, Monsieur. I'd say Mox... In many ways, it's a startup itself. So we've partnered with hundreds of equally interesting technology companies and partners to really launch a bank. I mean, if you think about what's happened in the last 12 to 18 months, just to bring a bank from scratch has been hugely interesting. From the industry perspective, I also think the developments here uh, are worth paying attention to. So if you think about Hong Kong, it's always been known as that international financial hub. Obviously, lots of banks. But when you think about retail banks, there aren't actually that many. And I think what's interesting is, from a Hong Kong Inc. perspective, how they've brought about eight new banks to challenge and compete in this market, especially kind of what's happened in the last 12 to 18 months. So 
exciting times. It definitely is. Ben, you've been enabling innovation in some senses. How is, does your organization work, uh, both with startups and corporates, uh, in use of modern technology? And how are you changing the landscape here in Hong Kong? Yeah, I think uh, in the traditional sense of corporate innovation, uh, typically in the past, uh, we're seen as incubators, accelerators, and there's an element of job matching. Uh, where we find startups to match with a particular business. I think that has evolved over time. Um, corporate innovation has taken a new form where we spend a lot of time actually understand the, understanding the business unit pain points. Mm -hmm. uh, and not even just understand the pain points, but what are the business values each of these businesses are you trying to drive? Whether it's driving revenues, cost optimization, data intelligence, or growing the customer ecosystem as a whole. That's the role that corporate innovation arms need to better understand from the business side so that we can actually design programs that recruit the right type of startups that can come in and actually land the projects. So for us at Eureka Nova, uh, we, we're really driven and our KPIs are all built around business integrations. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only do we, when we say integrations, we don't necessarily say match between business units and startups, but what type of business values are we actually able to drive as a result? I mean, with, with the Mills Fabrica, what has been the change in innovative projects that you're running and how is that culture being distilled through the firm? So actually, the Mills, the entire Mills and the Mills Fabrica are the innovative uh, project by the Nanfron Group. So yeah. it is mainly known as a property developer and mm -hmm. uh, for their work in life sciences, but the Mills and the Mills Fabrica is a um, revitalization project of uh, their old textile factory. So they they uh, exited the industry and wanted to give back. Yeah. Um, so the Mills Fabrica doesn't namely uh, focus on bringing back innovation towards uh, the company's uh, main businesses, but rather helping the rest of the industries. And how are you seeing that propagate throughout the firm? Yeah, and, so and, uh, even well, though we not directly, um, our mandate is not to directly help uh, the corporate, we managed to um, create synergies between the startup that we help and some of our other departments and, and colleagues. So for example, there's this company called uh, Origami Labs, and they were able to run proof of concepts with um, our uh, property uh, management uh, departments. Um, there's a company called Unspun. They were able to use our facilities in China to develop their 3D weaving uh, machine prototypes. Mm -hmm. And we have other brands, um, like more direct-to-consumer start, uh, product startups, which were able to launch their product in our retail facilities and uh, also showcase uh, and, and meet the partners there. Okay, thank you. Ben, you are looking at enabling a lot of these projects, both from a corporate and startup side. What have been some of the innovative projects that you have seen uh, in the space that you want to talk about? Some examples that we can... Yeah, I'll, I'll speak on the mall operator side a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, we, we do, as I mentioned earlier, build programs that are specific to what the business unit uh, requires. Yeah. Um, so uh, we were looking specifically in the COVID uh, situation, how we could create a, a healthier and a safe uh, for environment. Uh, for our malls uh, moving forward. Yeah. And we were able to identify um, Rice Robotics as a company uh, to come into our program, as well as a company that we have now in our portfolio. And uh, we brought them as first as a food delivery system. We thought that uh, there was an opportunity where uh, our F&B tenants are able to access our K11 app and receive orders from our K11 Atelier uh, mm -hmm. tenants and then the robot will uniquely pick up the food and then set it upstairs in a commercial building. What's unique about that is that uh, Rice Robot is able to now integrate with our turnstiles and our elevators, which is quite unique. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the midst of that, we also saw an opportunity for a disinfection. And I think that uh, raised a really new uh, dynamic situation and environment for us in a mall situation. Uh, I think a year or two years ago, we would never imagine a mall with robots running around. Yes. It's different now when you go to the mall. Uh, you, you see robots running around autonomously mm -hmm. and disinfecting uh, the place. So this has created uh, something in Hong Kong that is now acceptable and it has huge upside. 
uh, where you are shopping with robots in the future. No, it's, yeah. it's quite interesting. I, I love the symphony that was released after one of the malls had, a, had an issue with the robots all over cleaning and right. uh, sanitizing, That's right. right? That's a beautiful example of changing culture, but also adoption therein. Um, Edwin, in the banking world with virtual banks, there's been a lot of changes and a lot of innovative projects that you are coming up with. Uh, I've loved the experience of being onboarded in mocks within five minutes. Uh, I love my personalized card as well. Uh, what are some of the innovative projects that you want to highlight on you've been working with the technology and startup world? Well, I was just thinking, maybe picking up on Ben's point and also your own point, it's um, back to the pain point. Because yeah. for us, uh, a lot of what we've done, was it, it's always started with customer research because banking in many mm. ways, not all that different or new, but it's how do you challenge it and how do you just kind of get that customer insight into what's missing or what's needed or what's kind of really frustrating them at banks. And what's quite interesting is while banks in Hong Kong in many ways are very, very good, there were points that were missed out. And, yeah. and for example, in your onboarding point, I mean, this is an, an, a mini in, innovation in our steps, but we really challenge ourselves in terms of how can you bring an experience that typically could take hours if you include yeah. travel, maybe even days like for all the processing to turn into minutes. And, and we've had to work with partners because if you look at kind of our wall, like in mocks, like we have our own principles and one of them is always about working with our ecosystem partners or just never walking alone, growing together. So we had to work with two, three partners specifically around the biometric identifications that mm -hmm. you've talked about and how do you streamline that process so that, you know, what was traditionally done in a bank from a KYCs or, uh, that perspective, how do you create a different experience for the customer through that? And we've done so many iterations of that with customers, with partners, in order to deliver what we have today. So maybe just building on from there, right? Uh, in this experience, um, how has the Hong Kong ecosystem been useful for you, right? Uh, and uh, maybe you want to talk about how some of these startups may have been local or international. What has been that experience and journey for you to interact with them? Yeah, well, for Mox, uh, we've always been very clear in terms of what we're going to build and what we're going to buy. Mm -hmm. uh, and our whole ethos was bring kind of best of breed technologies to Hong Kong so that we really delivered a, a truly kind of delightful banking experience to customers in Hong Kong. Uh, and we looked, I mean, we've looked for partners both in Hong Kong uh, as well as overseas. Uh, we've had to learn from how other challenger banks and digital banks were done. Uh, for many of them, for the, I'd say, smaller startups, we did a lot of proof of concepts, as Kareen mentioned. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, banking still being a regulated industry, we, on balance, worked with some of the more established, I'd say, new startups and companies. Okay. Ben, how, how does corporate innovation best work for uh, that innovative um, engagement? Uh, what, what needs to be done on both sides? Yeah, there's a couple uh, tricks up our sleeves. Yeah. And I love to share one, and I think I've shared this with Karine as well in the past. Uh, make your business units pay for corporate mm -hmm. innovation. Um, and that's what we've been able to achieve. Okay. Uh, I think before the budgeting cycle, we really go in there and say, you have a pain point, we can help you solve it, budget it. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, once they budget it, they really have skin in the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think for us, that's been very crucial in how to drive corporate innovation because that's one big hurdle. But once you've achieved that, then you can actually spend time now to understand what all the metrics that are going to drive what you define as corporate innovation success. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's something that, you know, uh, has been working really well for us. And, you know, you run accelerators and other initiatives. How has that, the Hong Kong ecosystem, been good for you for funneling those startups for, uh, or, or, you know, the, across the reach that Hong Kong provides across Asia and beyond? Yeah, surprisingly, it's... Um, access to startups. I think uh, Hong Kong's foundation with the science parks, our peers, um, we also have uh, an influx of international startups uh, yeah. setting up here in Hong Kong. We can cross the border and before COVID, now virtually, Hopefully uh, yeah. to GBA and also bring these startups over. Uh, that has been uh, quite uh, a luxury for us mm -hmm. to be able to find the right type of startups to work with. And, and there's quite a few uh, out of Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. Karine, what's been your experience? How, how's, how's the best way for these two entities to work together and for us to bring out innovation in the ecosystem? Yeah. So first, we act a little bit as a platform to serve mm -hmm. other corporates, right? So we work yeah. with a lot of brands and manufacturers, retailers. And one thing that uh, talking to all of them 
they really are looking for is market fit and market readiness. Yes. Right, so they want innovations that they can implement now or at least very soon. Also, um, what they're looking for is um, so things that, that are going to solve their problems and also that are scalable uh, easily and that do not cost a lot of more than what the solutions they are already using. Yeah. And of course, sustainability is like the big, big thing right now. Okay. Yeah. And how, how are these, you talked about some of the traditional industries, right, from manufacturing and others who have been, as some people try to call it, the old economy, right, and they're transitioning. So how's your platform playing that role and what has been the response from the Hong Kong ecosystem to support that transition? So it's, it's been great, right, because Hong Kong is this one place where you have brands from all over the world yeah. with officers either for distribution, um, or, or a supply chain located here. So it's a great place. It creates this amazing ecosystem uh, with stakeholders from global stakeholders mm -hmm. all here and uh, all looking for solutions. So it's great. It attracts a lot of innovations, but also very close to the people who can implement them, uh, creating the prototypes, but also the production to scale around the world. And then we have... <laughs> As Ben mentioned, a great ecosystem like our peers. We can work together. We can exchange, you know, like um, uh, innovations. Work together to support uh, the, the co different companies, um, and then we also have the support of the government. Uh, you mentioned Hong Kong Science Park and Cyberport, and and uh, yeah. and a bunch of associations. And, and when, you know, um, one of the things we see is step one is actually building out innovation. Step two is maintaining innovation. How are you seeing, you know, what's the best ways for companies to innovate? What has been the challenges? And you've had a you know, stellar career working for both an incumbent bank and now a, a, a virtual bank, right? So what, what have been, the, you, you think, the challenges? And uh, how can an ecosystem like Hong Kong enable that, right? It's among the top hubs for innovation for financial services uh, and well-known uh, development hub for fintech. What's that uh, experience been? I actually think if you take a step back, what Hong Kong Inc. or with the government support that Karine alluded to has been incredible. Because um, we looked at so many markets when we were first starting this. To, to, to introduce kind of eight virtual banks all at roughly the same time, so six yeah. to nine months, we couldn't even find the same comparison across any industries. So very rarely would you see I don't know if I can say the names, but like you'd see eight Ubers or Deliveroo's attacking the same market at the same time. And again, back to that point around you know Hong Kong banking markets, it's well known, et cetera. There are a lot of banks, so there are about 170 banks in Hong Kong. But a lot of these are more focused on the commercials or the global markets, et cetera. When you really focus truly on the retail banking markets, you're talking about maybe 15 or so and introducing eight strong players into this market where these are all the likes of uh, kind of banks backed by the Alibabas, the Tencents, uh, the Pingons, et cetera, like all strong established players. That competition is incredible. And I think that's actually what's driven a lot of innovation even within Standard Chartered. So Mox is by Standard Chartered. And a, a question we often get is, we already have banking licenses. Not everyone went and did mm -hmm. the virtual banks. How come? And at the core, it was simply, if we don't cannibalize ourselves in some ways, someone else will. And, and I, I do think it is bringing about that challenge to the market to force the industry as a whole to innovate, where I do believe the net beneficiary has to be the customer. I guess the regulations have also played a role, right? You've had the HKMA coming up with the seven smart bank initiatives. SFC has also been doing you know, sandboxes as uh, insurance authority. So for startups coming from overseas and otherwise, I think this is a big enabler, right? Is uh, being able to do EKYC or video onboarding in, in a matter of minutes is was something unique in Asia at the time as well, yeah. So if I can just only add to that point, absolutely. Kind of how they've paved the way since 2017, virtual banks being one of those seven initiatives, uh, that's really paved the way. And I think that's why, at least within an Asia context, you see some of the other markets uh, across the region looking to replicate, to introduce their virtual banks and, and that same industry. So I think Hong Kong has taken the lead and these eight virtual banks are creating both the talent but also the, the magnet to attract different startups to whether it's globally or locally to, to support that ecosystem. Okay. Ben, what's been for you, what are the challenges for 
the clients that you're dealing with and the companies you're dealing with, which are large corporates who are looking to innovate, how do they keep innovating and they move into Industry 4.0 as such, and how can they leverage of the Hong Kong ecosystem? Yeah, that, that's a really big question. I think, um, you know, um, driving the initial innovation, I, I would say it's relatively easier than mm -hmm. sustaining it over Correct. time. Um, but I think it's a little bit of um, a top-down, bottom-up approach, right? From a top-down approach at New World Development, Adrian Chang, our CEO, uh, has been driving, creating shared value and innovation for, for years. Uh, and then from a bottom-up approach, uh, we have teams like ours and other innovation teams trying to identify the pain points and matching that with uh, business value that's consistent at a, call it, group level. And that's been able to kind of call it get our stars to align. Mm. And that has been able to help. And I, I think it's a mixture of a few things, right? I, I talked about uh, businesses actually putting a little bit of budget into innovation, aligning their team, their resources, and spending time to talk about their KPIs, their timeline, what they're trying to achieve. But then actually having a project team in place to land these projects are really important. So I think... It's, there's no one easy answer to it, mm -hmm. but you really have so many stakeholders amongst a large corporate uh, that you have to get buy-in from everyone to actually achieve true success in corporate yeah. innovation. Uh, so, so for me, I, I've always thought that you do need the top-down buy-in, yeah. and they need to set the tone, and that's been very helpful for us. I mean, what's your approach? And I mean, we, we heard about this top, and you heard about the budgets that are needed. It was very challenging to go... Um, innovation was a very buzzword four years ago where everybody was like, oh, head of innovation, startups go and pitch and nothing happens for a year because the person doesn't have a budget, right? It was, it was almost like a showpiece uh, innovation. But that's transition now, actually. Companies have budgets. Uh, uh, but how do you actually get these teams to get solid uh, budgets to transition? And what have you been seeing as the challenges to achieve that? Yeah, so I, I think in terms of budget, when the the startup and the innovation is really good, mm -hmm. we can find that, right? So yeah. uh, whenever a company that we we work with is looking for fund, we can connect them around the world with um, American uh, um, investors or European investors. Um, now, the other challenges that we see sometimes, uh, especially in, in the areas we look at, they involve deeper tech. So, you mm -hmm. know, when we talk about uh, new materials yeah. um, or, or uh, recycling technologies, that takes more time. So that's one of the challenges. And the other one is also is probably uh, the talent pool, right? So we have the innovators, we have the customers. Ugh, we, we could need more people who can help um, roll out these innovations and help yeah. scale up. So... Um, that, that could be something that in Hong Kong uh, would be very helpful. Yeah, I guess that's one of the things that you have seen with the technology talent acquisition scheme and special visas for technology talent to be fast-tracked. It's, it's probably going to be helpful in the short run. Uh, and then the setting up of the Greater Bay Area Bridge, right, where talent is one of the major focuses uh, for talent to go across border. Right? As we said, with COVID, it's probably been paused for the short uh, period of time, but hopefully towards the second half of the year, we'll see more of that development, right? Um, you know, you spoke about recycling. You also spoke about how sustainability has become a very important uh, element of uh, what we're doing here. Uh, and in a company, uh, and sorry, in, in a city like Hong Kong, where we have such high density of people, very high per capita wastage, etc. Um, what are you seeing in terms of ESG and sustainability by different products, right? I mean, look at textiles. That's there is a both sense of sustainability as well as recycling that comes in. Uh, what are the companies in the industry that you're seeing? Uh, what are they working on? Ah, we, we, <laughs> we see great, great innovations. Like um, there's this company, they're based in the US, but we work with them because we want them to, to expand around here yeah. as well. Um, they use uh, methane gas emission to create mm -hmm. bioplastics or uh, biodegradable plastic, right? Yeah. Um, we also um, see companies like um, uh, Renew Cell, which is based in Sweden, but same. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to have them uh, expand around here. They, they recycle all clothes, so they, they extract uh, the cellulose in all clothes to create mm -hmm. uh, raw materials that can be reused afterwards. And I'm assuming that there is that ecosystem here to support those companies coming in because there's a big demand by the large corporates as well to, uh, for sustainability. Right? Yeah. Um, 
I mean, Erwin, you know about this, HKMA has, has a big focus on green finance. Hong Kong's been issuing green bonds for a while as well. But from a sustainability perspective and ESG perspective, uh, what are your target demographics looking at? Do you see them being acutely aware of uh, sustainability as a need? I think for sure. I think yeah. customer-wise, the trend-wise, it already is. And, and I think in some ways, uh, virtual banks or digital banks or however you want to call them, already move in that direction. Mm -hmm. If you think about the branch footprint across the traditional banks, the statements, the past books, the paper forms you typically experience, yeah. and how, again, it's how do you challenge that entire process? Because if you ask most people, not that many people are hugely excited to fill in paper forms yeah. and to go to our branch. It's, it's not the most exciting visit that you can have. And again, it's how do you innovate and, 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 and bring all of that about. And for us, I think it was really clear as well. I mean, Hong Kong actually, while we've introduced eight new ones last year, hasn't had a new bank for probably 20 years. Yeah. Uh, and then even kind of back in 2000, it was more an amalgamation. So, so I, I think every bank has to stand for something. And I think that's what customers are looking for. Like, what do you stand for at your core? Yeah. I mean, to close with this, right, how are you seeing sustainability becoming a core for the corporates who are engaging? And uh, what kind of startups could be very useful for them to come over to Hong Kong for uh, providing the sustainability uh, access? Yeah, so I have two shameless plugs. Okay, go ahead. Uh, one is Impact Commons that we run, which is um, Asia's first UN SDG accelerator, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And then also in the Start Me Up HK Festival, we will be also um, organizing a summit called 1.5 Degrees Summit. Yeah. And that's looking at technologies to help us achieve the 1.5 Degrees um, benchmark that we're all trying to achieve. And this is the defining decade for us to do that. But I'll speak on you know the, the startups that will be uh, we we've been working with. We had two cohorts, um, UN SDG related startups, and one very exciting startup that I, I think is pretty cool is upcycling waste yeah. from a property perspective. So there's a lot of wood waste generally, uh, you know, in trade shows, in events, as well as in uh, buildings. Um, so what this company has been able to do, um, they've been able to break it down and then turn it into biochar. And then from that biochar, they're able to upcycle it to building plaster. And then now they're putting it back into the buildings. Right, so that's, that's great for a place like Hong Kong, which yeah. has a huge amount of construction industry and development as well. Right. So, right. Thank you all three of you. We've reached the end of our panel. Uh, very insightful. Uh, I hope the audience has got a sense of what Hong Kong can offer, both on the side of corporates who are looking to build their startup ecosystem and engagement, as well as innovation for startups who are coming in and engaging, right? Uh, it's in the prime place. We look forward to your participation across the Start Me Up HK Festival and engaging with all of us on uh, how you want to enter Hong Kong and engage with all of the different participants. Thank you very much for having us today, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Wow, this has been an amazing journey. And thank you very much for connecting with us. I'm sure you have created and built strong relationships around the startup ecosystem. If you want to know more about the ecosystem, please make sure to connect with the Start Me Up HK team. And hopefully I can see you next year so we can learn more about what's happening in innovation, startup, and anything around our ecosystems. So see you next year. My name is Jamilet. Thank you. <laughs>